Don, the question, why is there something rather than nothing, has, has haunted me for most of my life. And uh, when I talk to physicists, they talk about the laws of physics, quantum physics being there and a brute fact, and then everything can be generated. I talk to theologians, some philosophers, they talk about God as a necessary being. Uh, you're both a physicist and a believer. Uh, how do you answer the question uh, why there is something? We know there is something, but there could, could not there have been nothing? Well, I happen to be one to think that, that any explanation, when you carry it back, ha gets back to some original starting point that you, you, that you can't derive or you can't explain. And, you know, so I, I think if you had an explanation as to why there was something rather than nothing, that explanation itself would be, would be something <laughs> and maybe in need of it. So I, I, I think for me, I would like to have the simplest explanation for why there is what there, what there is. And so, you know, I, I do believe there's a God, that he's created the universe, but unlike many, I, I, I don't think of God as a logically necessary being. I think I, I agree with Richard Swinburne, I think of God as a brute fact. But I also sympathetic to John Leslie's point of view that maybe the world is the best possible. Maybe there's some principle that says what's best is what exists. Now, you know, that principle would would be would not have explanation. And I personally, I guess, would count that principle as being part of God. But that principle might explain other properties of God, such as wanting to do the best and so on. And well, so, that, in that case, uh, and in John Leslie's case, uh, uh, goodness or value is actually uh, uh, superior to God because uh, that's the entity that, that, in essence, creates God. John may not say it that way, but I think that's what it's saying. Well, I think if I, if I took, in as much as I'm sympathetic to that view, I would say that that whole principle is, part, is, is a core, the core of God. It may not be the personal aspect of God that we usually focus upon, but I... If that aspect is true, I would say that that's the core of God. And then there's other properties of God that follow out from that, that he acts for the best, that he creates the best, the best possible universe that maximizes, that maximizes our enjoyment combined with, with his appreciation of the elegance of the universe he's, he's created. Okay, so you're in a position where you do not think that the laws of physics are the ultimate brute fact because right. you believe in God and God created that and God created everything. So... We don't need that, but you believe now also that God is not a necessary being, meaning that uh, there's a, uh, a logical way to think about reality with no God, right? Um, uh, which a lot of people who believe in God disagree with. They think that if you really know God, you'll, you, you would have to recognize that that is logic, it'd be lo logically impossible for there not to be a God, but you don't agree with that. I right. think there could be. So, so God, in, in a sense, is lucky. Well, we're all lucky. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know. It, it, I, well, God is first lucky. First, I mean, I, I God, think, when, God, when God has God's awareness, the first thing God thinks about is, wow, I'm lucky. It may be. I don't, I, don't I don't know how God thinks. I mean, it, I, I do think that, that God certainly has no cause outside of himself. It, it, certainly, at least if you include this, which I count as part of God, the, the causal efficiency of, of the ethical principle that, that you know, what's best is is what happens. If you count that as part of God, as I do, then, then I think there is no cause outside of God. So, so in some sense, God doesn't have a cause. He's the origination of all causes. In other words, when I take all causation, I trace it back to God. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I don't believe in free will, because I believe all, all my decisions really can be traced, traced back to God. And I suppose I similarly believe that, you know, at least given God's God's nature, which is a bit mysterious. I don't, I don't quite see, I don't see how that's logically determined or even necessarily determined purely by saying the universe is the best it's possible. But given God's nature and the apparent fact that he loves elegance, I think that if the world is the best possible, if that's part of, the, of God, that, that the world is the best possible, then we have God creating a very elegant universe that also has sentient beings to appreciate. Yeah, it. and I, I think that is interesting and arguable, but the question is why is there anything at all is a different question than what we find. Uh, because you, you're talking about the, the initiation point and what is the character of that. And if it's value that, you, that you've said, if it's a brute fact that God exists, and, but God didn't have to exist, so God is lucky to exist, and we're even luckier than that because God is, was lucky to exist, and then we were lucky that God decided to create something that, that evolved us. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's one, you know, that's one, way, that's one way to put it. I mean, that's the way things are, so I don't know whether lucky is the 
Right, but I mean, I, I, I do feel blessed to be here, and I'm, and I'm, you know, I feel fortunate, and I don't know whether God feels fortunate to... Well, yeah, if, if, if God wasn't absolutely certain by being necessary, being logically impossible for God not to exist, then when God reflects upon God's own existence, God has to feel pretty lucky. I suppose, see, the other thing, if I thought that, that God, and if I, if I meant all of God was logically necessary, it would seem that that would also include whatever God did. And so then it would seem that even the creation was also logically necessary, and that would mean that we are logically necessary too. And it just seems to be very hard for me to buy. I mean, it, it seems I can easily imagine that I'm not here. Mm -hmm. And I can also imagine, I can imagine a, a hypothetical world in which nothing concrete exists. I mean, maybe mathematical theorems uh, have some platonic existence that they exist no matter what. But, but Is that right? Because that's a very important point. Because if you have a God that, that is very strong in your, in your approach, uh, that's God's independent creation of everything, but now you have all these mathematical formulas, logical operations, propositions, who knows what else, floating around in platonic heaven, and God is surrounded by this blizzard of abstract objects. Yes, but they don't have any causal power, and in some sense, they're just truisms. They're just tautologies. I mean, they're, they're theorems. They're if then. If if A is true, then B is true. And, and so there's not really any 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 real content to those to those things. I mean, they're just true true by ne by necessity. So it's it's a matter of wh whether you say that they exist or what or, or not. I mean, I'm happy to say that they exist in the Platonic realm, but they don't have concrete existence. And so I believe that God created all other concrete so if you existence. Believe that, if you believe that they do exist. And they exist necessarily. Yes. Necessarily. Then you believe abstract objects have a higher plane of existence than does God, because you just told me God does not does not have a necessary. Well, if existence. you if you put if you put it that way, in fact, that's what I believe is is wrong with the 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 Anselmian ontological argument for the existence of God. I don't believe that any of the arguments are proof. And my issue with the Anselm's argument is that if if you say that that what necess exists necessarily, I mean, this is kind of a modern yeah, yeah. form, maybe Plantinga's version of it, that if what exists necessarily is greater than what doesn't exist necessarily, and if you then define that to be God, then you have a, then you say that God exists necessarily. But the trouble with that, as I see it, is that you're really proving the existence of the greatest uh, logical necessity or the greatest truism. So, and and that's not what I view as God. So, I mean, maybe these things exist necessarily. But they're not concrete. They can't create conscious perceptions. They can't create me. There's this big concrete world that I that I regard personally as far more valuable than this platonic realm. I mean, the platonic realm, it's interesting. I mean, it is logically necessary in my view. I mean, the, the truth, say the truth of a mathematical theorem is, is something that just couldn't not exist. I mean, it could be that there's nobody to perceive it and have gotten no, but 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 I believe I believe it exists in some platonic sense, but I don't think it has power. So even if it's more valuable in the sense of the ontological argument, I don't think it leads us to something that truly has as much value as the real God. And that's why I don't believe the ontological argument leads us to what I believe is the real God, who's the creator of the real concrete world that includes us.